hello. There that you go. There you it? are. Look at you, man. Hey, how's it going? I'm Hamish. Nice to meet you. How you doing, Hamish? All good? Good. How you doing? Good, man. And of course, we, you know, we were playing the Godfather of Soul, James Brown there, to kick things yeah. off. Get on the good foot and, you know, I know Hamish, you know, you probably love James Brown. I mean, you have many musical influences. You kind of get it. I, 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 We just figured you got it, you know, like like songs like What What You Do To Me, you know? Mm -hmm. That's some funky yeah. blues. That's some funky blues, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the stuff. That's what I was raised on was like, you know, blues music and soul music and rock and roll and all that good stuff. Exactly, exactly, yeah. man. And just, dude, super excited to have you. I mean, we celebrate your awesome new single. Of course, everything starts again. But really, we celebrate your whole career. I mean, the quality of your output since 2016, Hamish. I mean, how many artists can say they've done that in six years? Very few, man. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely... Uh... It's funny, I think, like, since COVID and the lockdowns, you kind of have a chance to, like, go back and look at what you've done, where usually you're just plowing through onto the next thing. And it is like the past few years, I've been able to look back at all that stuff, and it, it is like I'm proud of that body of work. I mean, yeah, you were going nonstop there for a second, Hamish. I mean, I mean, there's, you know, some amazing performances. We saw, you know, a, a tape of you performing with Gary Clark Jr. Don't know you a thing. And mm -hmm. my God, man, I don't know. I didn't know you could make a guitar sound like an orchestra. You know what I mean? It was very <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's awesome to hear. Yeah, that was definitely like one of those moments, like those pinch me, you know, like I'm dreaming moments being able to do that with Gary. But then like, Hamish, like you say that, but like you sounded, you looked so darn confident. And, you know, a lot of our musicians here, friends in Nashville, they perform on stage with each other. And and I'm always curious, like, you know, you, you opened for B.B. King before he passed. Mm -hmm. You You played with Gary Clark. Are you, are there ever any nerves? Like, man, I don't want to fuck this up right now with Gary Clark Jr., you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially, like, yeah, before it, I get very nervous. Like, the BB King show, I remember in particular, that was, like, the first time really I was playing in, like, you know, they, they were in big theaters with huge audiences. And before that, I'd mostly done, like, clubs and, you know, pubs and things like that. So that one, I particularly remember being, like, lying in the bathroom feeling like i'm gonna throw up like right before <laughs> i have to go on stage but then once you right. go on stage it always just kind of like something switches and it's like lucid dreaming you just kind of go into like a trance where you're like half conscious of the audience and half just in your own world right and everything just kind of clicks i guess if you're lucky right right and i, I do want to ask you about your songwriting but since we're talking about db king and mm -hmm. that it, it like it, it's true that 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 was the last show before he passed is that is that true yeah, it was it was yeah. right when I went from Australia to America for like the first time. So it was 2014. And um, yeah, I just luckily got to open for him on this tour. And it was meant to be like, like, you know, six or seven dates. And it ended up being two because on the second right. one, that was when he fell ill at the House of Blues in Chicago. Right. And after that, he didn't play again. So it was very oh, like man. bittersweet kind of the high of being able to, you know, Big King meant so much to me growing up and still does, yeah. obviously, but was such an influence on me. So Man, it was like not? such a high to be able to open for him. And then it was like the kind of crash of when the tour yeah. came off the rails. Man, what an interesting feather on your cap that is, you know? Like, I remember like like we interviewed Mary Wilson of the Supremes in like late yeah, 2020. Yeah. And that was the last interview before she passed. Yeah. And, and it's like, it becomes like a weird point of reference in one's career, doesn't it? It it's does. Weird. It really does. But it's also just like, you know, it's a testament to those that's kind of a rare breed of musician and person that they, they do it up until they drop. Like it's like, <laughs> right. I, you know, it's like Keith Richards, like hopefully he'll drop on stage probably. Cause I'm sure that's yeah, the way he would want to. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like they're made from some sort of good stock that keeps going, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hamish. Absolutely. And man, and you know, we are thinking about your songwriting and you know, you got to think I mean, you mentioned, you've mentioned before how you love, you know, writing on like the train. You, like mm -hmm. you've talked about this before and you know willie nelson uh we love willie he says that when he's stuck for ideas when he's got like writer's block hamish he goes for a drive he just gets mm -hmm. up and drives drives anywhere is this kind of like your remedy like with the train like do you have like little hacks like that like do you just go for a ride go for the train where you can just kind of like you know l unclick it a little bit yeah that definitely is good to do i think to kind of get out of just you know go somewhere that gets you out of your own head and people watching and things like that, that you come up with, you know, different ideas. But now, I mean, especially since COVID, I haven't, I haven't caught the train in a while, but now it's like, yeah. now basically through COVID, I did a lot of writing. And the thing I think that really has changed for me is like, I just have to kind of show up. Like I have to be present 
get a guitar, get a piece of paper, show up and be like, I'm going to make something. Like now it's very much, I can like kind of harvest my energy into making something by just showing up to it and being present. Whereas like, if I'm just lazy and kind of blase about it, mm. nothing's going to happen. But now it's like, if I pick up the instrument and I force myself to write, now I'm at a stage where I can make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Man, for totally a long time, it. didn't really happen for me like that. So Interesting. It's yeah. like a post-pandemic version of Hamish. I think so. I think it was like whenever, you know, when the thing of being able to play live had gone away, it was right. like all I had was basically writing and creating. And so it, it definitely upped how I write music and create and yeah, definitely changed that. Yeah. By the way, you're in Australia right now, of course, right? Hamish? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How are things there like, you know, with, with, with the business? Because I, I know here in the US, it's actually like completely picked up. Like I know mm. a friend was in Atlanta yesterday and others were touring in Colorado. Like people are like out and about now. Is that, yeah. is that how you guys are over there? It's, it's kind of starting to now because we went through, I'm also in Melbourne where we went through right. like a, a lot of other places in Australia for the past two years weren't really affected by COVID, but Melbourne and then eventually Sydney, but Melbourne got hit really hard. So we were like, for the past two years, there were periods of time of maybe like seven months where we were just in lockdown and you couldn't go anywhere or do anything, see anyone, all that stuff. So it was right. like Melbourne, it, it's still kind of slowly bouncing back, but now it's like, you know, now gigs are finally happening again and cinemas are open and all these things. So yeah. Yeah, but it's been very much a bit of whiplash, like open, closed, open, closed. Yeah, good, man. Because everybody needs to hear everything starts again. Because what a song, dude, you've encored yeah. there. I mean, you've done some great stuff this year. But like this song, I mean, a res I think it's a response to the uncertainty of 2020. But yeah, I mean, it's like a timeless principle, right? How everything dies and everything is born again. It's such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing, man. But like, was the pandemic the thing that like pushed you to write this song? Or like, was this an idea from before? Yeah, it's funny. I wrote it very quickly it must have been like right before the pandemic started like maybe it was like january of 2020 right and it was i think it was like that that phrase came to me and that's what i was thinking about how things go in cycles and things die and things are born and whatever and it was like it was literally like i was walking to get a cup of coffee and i wrote the first half of the song on the way to get it and the second half of the song on the way back and then for some reason, when I wrote it, it was a bit more kind of like a country song. Like it was a bit more strummy and I liked the lyric side of it, but I wasn't that keen on the music side. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of put it away. And then in the middle of last year, when we were going through the lockdown, I just, for some reason, I was listening to this band called Big Star. That's a really great band. And I mm -hmm. thought, what if I took the lyrics from the song I'd written and put it on a more kind of power pop, big star sounding song. Interesting. And that's when it like came together. And, and yeah, I think it was on my mind because especially with the pandemic, it gave it like a new kind of meaning, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, I, I, it, that's fascinating, Hamish. When you say put it away, because I, I always think that's that's fantastic. <laughs> like, man, like how do you guys keep track of so many, like, you know, again, we have friends that are singer songwriters and in Nashville, you write 20 songs a week. How yeah. do you know? when like the right time is the right time for a song that you thought about a year and a half ago, you know, with a girl watching a movie, you know, like, how, yeah. like, dude, like, do you have a hard drive? Like, how do you know? It's unbelievable. I love it. Yeah, it is funny. I, I don't even really know. Like, it's like, and sometimes with songs like that, I think that you write very quickly. You can almost put it down to like, it was too easy. So you just kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know if you, you maybe don't appreciate it enough until a little later. And right. yeah, I think it's interesting. Interesting how sometimes songs can just take on different meanings kind of as you come back to them later or you change one little phrase and the whole song changes. So it is definitely like songwriting is like the closest thing to like magic. So it is a little hard sometimes to to know why this works or doesn't work or how it happens and all those things. Absolutely, Hamish. You're being so good with your time. Thanks, man. But, uh, you know, your songwriting, I mean, even in songs like you, from 2016, from the 2016 album. You know, I loved, man, how you always tiptoe the line, even when you're talking about universal themes like love. Mm -hmm. You don't go one way or the other. Uh, like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, it, with these things, it's easy to go really dramatic, either in, in the dark side or in the light side. Yeah. And you always do this thing, man. I, I don't know, you is coming to mind, but there's a few others. Where th that you just tiptoed this beautiful line of what love is really about, like this gray area, man, just like you do mm -hmm. it such a beautiful way. How do you do that, man, as a songwriter? 
Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, I think it's really, I think everyone's always like a kind of sum of their influences and what they grow up listening to. And I think because, you know, growing up, like my favorite songwriters were always like Bob Dylan and Tom Petty and George Harrison. And I feel like they, they kind of did that a lot in their writing. Like, I think like, um, I think like something by George Harrison is an example of it's a love song, but it, it could kind of be about anything like with sure. George Harrison songs, particularly you were like, he could be singing about a woman or he could be singing about like a higher spirit or like a higher spirit, right? Yeah. All these different things. And I think that's just something that probably because I loved all that music, hopefully it just kind of was something that I took away from it and tried to put my own spin on, I guess. Sure. Sure. No, and I think it's always good. Cause I do think there's a trend now with like certain songwriters where they tell you exactly what their song is about and it's very laid out of like i wrote this song about my breakup with this person and blah, blah. and that to me is less exciting because i always like i don't really care what you know rolling stone songs about or a bob dylan song because i kind of take it and put my own yeah. you know how i relate to it and that's more interesting to me i think than having everything explained like i agree 100 percent. yeah i agree man that's what makes your music so great man well listen you're being so good with your time you know like before the pandemic you were playing stateside quite a bit you know you played uh in napa valley the mm -hmm. the wine one that's skipping my name right now you played all over man. A bottle rock yeah yeah bottle rock yeah you played yeah. a bunch of you played a bunch of stuff man when we'd love to have you back man this is you know your your, your output right now is it, it begs to be played. What what, what are your plans? Yes, for I'm planning to come back to the states, Perfect, and I man. want to um, I want to finally finish this album that everything starts again and yeah, morning light and these songs are going to be on. Finish the rest of those, do some gigs in America, and kind of start it you know start it up again because it's been man. before the pandemic. I was based in America for the past like five years, so it's like I'm very keen to get back and kind of you know get back to playing live and doing that stuff. Man, you look rejuvenated. You know, your energy, your passion. <laughs> you just look like you're about to take over the world. It's really fascinating. Can't wait, man. Yeah. No, me too. I mean, I do feel, I think after like, you know, obviously all the lockdowns and things, it's like as soon as you, yeah. I've just been in rehearsals and it's like as soon as you're playing again with a drummer and a bassist, it's like, oh, this is what I do. Like finally I feel, you know, rejuvenated again. Absolutely, brother. Well, man, you got a champion here in Nashville. Thank you so I much for your time, it, Hamish. Have thanks a great for day, me. man. Thanks so much. Thanks you too. All the Bye. best.